My name is Risha Patel, and this is my Physics 2212 Lab 2 video lab report. Similar to the last lab, the purpose of this experiment is to determine the amount of excess charge on a piece of charged tape. Using this data, we can establish an idea of charge and their interactions for simple household materials. Instead of treating the tape as a point charge, we are treating it as a line of charge, which results in a different computational model. The purpose of this is to calculate a better approximation of the amount of charge. The results from this lab show that the charge is equal to 2.3 times 10 to the negative eighth coulombs. The fundamental principles and concepts used in this lab are Coulomb's law, which is an equation that calculates the force of two charges, the electric field, which is an equation that calculates the electric field of a charge from a certain observation location, the electric field formula for a rod, which is used to find the field from a line of charge, the force due to gravity, which is an important concept observed in the experiment, and the relationship between force and electric field. Also, superposition, which is the idea of using several segments of point charges to model the field by dividing the object into several pieces and summing each electric field. The experiment for Lab 2 is similar to the experiment from Lab 1. Essentially, after acquiring two pieces of charged tape, tape B will be placed in this manner and tape A will be brought towards tape B. Because of like charges, tape B will be repelled by tape A and float upwards. From this, we can measure the distance and calculate important quantities. The difference from this lab so the last one is that instead of treating tape A and tape B as point charges, we're treating them as lines of charges. The data from this experiment is shown below. The mass of tape B is 0.002 kilograms. The distance from A to B is 0.0243 meters, and the width and length is 0 0.18, 0 0.195 meters, respectively. Here are some important calculations for this lab. In order to make these calculations, we must relate the magnitude of the force of gravity and the magnitude of the force of the electric field. Another thing, another thing we must do is assume that the charge of A and B are the same. Utilizing the electric field of a rod formula, I set this equal to Fg and found an expression for Qb. For Qb, I found that it was 2.3072 times 10 to the negative eighth coulombs. Using the value of Q found in the last slide, I was able to create a function that calculated the electric field and electric force at a point on the line of charge for tape B. Shown on the slide is a function for the electric field and a function that creates n charges in a given line for tape A and B. This slide is a continuation of the code which shows how the electric field and force was calculated from the line of charge at tape B. And now we have the model and result that was created from the computational model. As you can see, the magnitude of electric force is 1.71625 times 10 to the negative um, newtons. The magnitude of gravitational force is 1.962 times 10 to the negative third newtons. Assumptions, approximations, and idolizations. Air resistance on a moving object can be ignored because the object only moved a small distance, therefore we could ignore drag. We cannot treat a long tape as, a, as though it were a point charge because the purpose of this lab calls for, it, calls for it to treat it as a line of charge. We must assume that each U-tape had the same amount of charge because the calculations would not work otherwise. What if you had modeled each of your tapes as a single point charge, like in previous labs? Compare the estimated value of a charge you get when you use your experimental data to produce a point charge model to the value you got with your line of charge model. In lab one, the charge results was 1.1346 times 10 to the negative eighth coulombs, whereas in lab two, the charge results was 2.3072 times 10 to the negative eighth coulombs. As you can see, the charge values are different because of the different models used in each lab. For the lab one charge, we treated the tape as we, we treated the tapes as a point charge, whereas in lab two, we treated the tapes as a line of charge, which computes the electric field differently. Because we are treating it as a line of charge, there would be a greater amount of charge since each individual piece has a greater amount of electrons or protons. The line of charge model gives us a closer approximation because treating a piece of tape as a distribution of charge is more ideal and practical.